Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and welcome to another channel intro. Today I've got seven questions for flat earthers. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give these questions now. They'll be released at 7 o'clock in the morning and I'm going to put out my answers the same day at 4 p.m. See if you can solve these questions in the meantime. Okay, here we go. Question number one. Where do meteors come from? And if they're from within the dome or within the Earth's atmosphere, what speeds them up fast enough for them to glow and sometimes even explode? And then slows them down again. What force speeds them up? Number two, the atmosphere of Earth has a gradient of pressure. This is easy to tell by measuring the pressure at a valley floor and then going up to the top of a mountain and measuring the pressure again. So, how low does this pressure get in the atmosphere and at what altitude? And what stops it from going any lower? Question number three. If we take a long, rigid tube, capped on both ends, and, and suck all of the air out so that there's a vacuum in there, and we run that from sea level to the top of Mount Everest. And then we open up the top of that tube at the peak of Mount Everest. Once pressure equalizes, what will the pressure be at the bottom of the tube? Number four, how much would a sniper making a 1,000 yard shot have to adjust for Coriolis given the mainstream science definition of Coriolis and the rotational speed of the Earth. We're going to assume two things. One, the sniper fires directly north from a point at 45 north latitude. And two, the flight time of the bullet is going to be 2.8 seconds. Tell me how far he'd have to adjust his aim. Number five, if the Earth is rotating as mainstream science says it is at 1,038 miles per hour at the equator at sea level, what is the rotational speed 50 miles above it? Number six, if the Earth is rotating at 1,038 miles per hour as mainstream science says, flat earthers say that we should feel that rotation. In what direction would we feel that force? And number seven, how do you calculate the average velocity of an unladen swallow? Now, wait a couple hours, try and figure this out. I'll have the answers at four o'clock. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you for stopping by. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe down in the lower right corner. Take care, guys.